Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Design with Ruzbe. Continuing with CSWA practice problems, today we'll work on question 4.8. Let's take a look at this question. So in this question, unit of measurement is millimeter gram second. Like always, we need to ensure we are using the same unit of measurement in solid work setting. Now, looking at this geometry, this is a symmetric geometry. So what we need to do, we need to only model half of this geometry and then we can use mirror command. My preference is to focus on a front view. You can see the top, front, and bottom view. I want to start with the front view. In this view, I'm going to make a 2D sketch, then I use extruded boss feature to make a 3D model. Then I focus on some small features like a chamfer here, like the holes, and eventually I'm going to use mirror command to make the final model. So with this introduction, let's jump into SolidWorks and start modeling this part. In SOLIDWORKS, first thing first, we need to check unit of measurement, and you can see that we have millimeter gram second, which is a correct unit of measurement. Now, as I mentioned, I want to start with the front plane. So I click on the sketch, click on the sketch, and I choose front plane. Here, because it's a symmetric geometry, I prefer to start with a center line or a symmetry line. So I click on the drop down menu here, I choose center line, and I make a center line. Or you can make a line and change it to construction line, doesn't matter. Now, I want to make a 2D sketch, so I click on line command and I start from the origin. Go to left, go up, left, down, going to left, down, right, here, here, and this. Okay? So this is only half of the geometry and it's just a 2D sketch. Now, I have this rough sketch. Let's add some dimensions. Looking at the front view, we can see that the distance between this line and the top line is 58 millimeters. We can also see that the thickness of this vertical line or vertical bar is 18 millimeters. So this should be 18. Also, we have a distance between this line and another line on the other side of the symmetry line. So there are two ways to add that distance and I want to show you the most efficient one. The most efficient one is that you can click on the line, click on center line, and you can see now I have 29. If you go to the other side of the symmetry line, now you can see that the dimension is increased. Basically, SOLIDWORKS automatically detects that you want to dimension two lines that are kind of symmetric. That's why it gives you the distance between this line and a projection of the line on the other side. So this distance should be 55, I simply add 55. Alternative solution is that you click on this line, you click on a center line, and you can simply put the dimension here, 55 divided by 2. We can do that calculation and then put it here. Both method works, it's just up to you which one you prefer to use. Same idea, if you look at the front view, you can see that the distance between left side and the right side of the geometry is 190 millimeters. So I click on this line, I click on center line, I go to the right, and this distance should be 190. Also, if you look at the right view, you can see that we have 12 millimeter thickness, which is the thickness of the bottom section. So this distance this length should be 12 mm. And finally, there is another dimension. The distance between this bottom surface and this surface that we have here, this distance should be 28 mm. Okay, as you can see, we have some sort of explosion in geometry, and it's typical because the geometry is not fully defined. In order to fix this, simply drag the point, I, I drag this point and I put it back into the original position. So now you can see that we have all these dimensions. Next, looking at the front view, you can see that we have this thickness. This thickness should be 12 millimeters. So this is also 12 millimeter. Okay, awesome. So now we added all the dimensions that we could find on a right view or the front view, but it's still you can see that this line is not fully defined. If I grab that point, you can move it to right or left. If you look at the geometry in a question, we can find proper dimension for it. However, looking at front view, you can see that this line is in line with this horizontal line. Again, this is assumption. 
it's not really clear it's not stated in a question however looking at the geometry in the front view that's my interpretation because we don't have any other dimensions okay so for now what I'm gonna assume I assume this line and this line they're on the same line so I'm gonna add collinear relation and now you can see that the geometry is fully defined okay so everything is now ready we can extrude this geometry so click on feature click on extrude bus and then here I'm gonna change it to mid plane it's just easier for me to work with the mid plane and looking at the top view of the geometry you can see that the overall width of the geometry is 50 millimeters so I'm gonna add 50 millimeters to here okay click on OK and that's it great so that's the first part now we have this geometry next step let's focus on the top view click on the sketch click on the sketch and click on this surface first we need a hole and in, or in order to make that hole we need to have a circle so I make a circle here the diameter of the circle should be 15 millimeters so this is 15 the distance between the center point and this line is 18 millimeter also looking at the top view you can see the distance between this hole and the other hole on the right side of the geometry which should be 155 so what I can do I can click on drop down menu again I make a symmetry line here and this distance I click on the center point click on symmetry line and I go to the other side this distance should be 155 awesome so now this circle is fully defined click on feature click on extrude cut and you can cut this next we need to add a chamfer to this corner now in order to add chamfer you have two options first you can make a triangle on the top surface and simply cut extrude that feature or the other option is to use chamfer command let's go with the chamfer command so from feature I click on the drop-down menu here fillet command and I choose chamfer however when you're dealing with chamfer typically it's a 45 degree and the distance is determined by you right this case is gonna be different I don't want to work with angle I have two dimensions for my chamfer one is 20 millimeter the other one is 25 so instead I click and change this one to distance distance click on it now here you have the options symmetric we know that 25 millimeter and 20 millimeter doesn't mean it's symmetric so click on the drop down menu and I choose asymmetric and here you just need to define the dimension so one is 20 the other one is 25 I click on this and now you can see the preview that's exactly what we want so instead of drawing a triangle and then cut it I'm just using the chamfer command click on OK and that's it okay so now we have everything let's focus on this vertical bar so what we need here is the arc shape and also another hole so I click on the sketch click on the sketch and I click on this surface first let's focus on the arc shape in order to make arc first let's draw a center line here because again it's gonna be symmetric so I click on arc command and then maybe I start from here I go here and that's the arc shape I know the arc should be tangent to this line so I hold control choose that line and from the relations I choose tangent I also want left point and a right point to be symmetric so I click on the left point hold control click on the line click on the right point and I choose symmetric we also have the radius for the arc which is 40 millimeter click on the smart dimension and this should be 40 okay so now we have a fully defined arc also we need a hole and that hole is on the center point of the arc so I click on circle command and then here I need a hole click on this and this dimension should be 16 millimeters so that's 16 and that's it in order to cut extrude this feature let's close the contour I click on line command and here I close the top contour 
Now I have four contours. Click on OK and then here click on Feature, Extrude Cut. Simply choose four contours or three, like one circle and then this left side and the right side. Click on OK and that's it. So now we have this feature made. Awesome. So now we have everything. We are ready to make the other half of the geometry. So from feature, I click on mirror command. For the mirror face, I choose this surface and simply click on bodies to mirror. And then here, you can simply click on this body and you can see the preview. Click on OK and that's it. Awesome. So now we have the geometry. Last step is to add a rib to the bottom section. So let's rotate the geometry, click on a sketch, click on a sketch and click on this surface. First, let's make a center line here. And the rib that we want to have here is basically a rectangle. So click on rectangle command and then I make something here. First of all, this rectangle should be symmetric with respect to this line. So I click on the top line this one and a bottom line and from the options I choose symmetric. Also the width of this should be 8 mm. So click on the smart dimension and the width is 8 mm. Click on OK, click on feature, click on extrude bus. Here I'm not really sure what extrusion lengths I need but you don't need to define that. So you can simply click on drop down menu and from the options you can choose up to surface. Then next step you define a surface and now SOLIDWORKS knows that the extrusion should stop when it reaches to this surface. Click on OK and that's it. So that's the final geometry. That's what we want. Okay so now it's time to go back to the question, check the total volume and make sure that this is a correct model. Let's go back to the question and check the final answer. In the question, you can see the total volume is 258,631 cubic millimeters. Let's go back to our model and check the total volume. In this model, in order to find the total volume, you can click on evaluate, then mass properties. And here you can see the total volume. The total volume we found is 258,000 630 cubic millimeters. If you round up this number, you're going to get exactly the same answer as shown in the question. This is showing that our model is correct. There's no problem with it. And also, in addition to that, it shows that our assumption, if you remember, we made an assumption in the beginning for the front view sketch that two lines are having collinear relationship. So that assumption is correct because our final answer is correct. So that's showing that our assumption will be made is correct. Okay, awesome. That's a wrap for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any comments or feedback, please leave comments down below. Thanks again for watching and your support. My name is Ruzbe. Hope to see you again soon in the next videos.